What should I do? Throw him out! You hear him? He just said, throw him out. He's the boss. What should I get? Tell him to get a hand up! What's up, guys? Dom here, back again from the Lee Sofa, and we are here with another one breaking down a legendary scene. Analyze that. Let's dive right into it. So today we're looking at one of Robert De Niro's famous movies, Analyze That. He's a mobster and he tries to get a regular job and for one scene he becomes a car salesman. And if any of you guys have been watching my channel for a while, not only do you guys know that I've been doing sales for almost a decade, but my expertise is car sales. So I think this is the perfect scene to break down. But guys, I am doing training, sociological training if you want to get better at sales, if you want to make more money, if you want to get better at talking to police officers, authority figures, getting on more dates, social intelligence is everything. DM me on my Instagram right here. DM me here. We'll set something up for you and we'll get you going. I got your back. Look at the size of that trunk. You could put three bodies in there. Just kidding. Just trying to levitate the situation. So obviously he's an ex-mobster in the movie, so he's talking about the trunk space, something that he would utilize it for, putting three bodies in there. Funny little scene, but obviously this has some actuality to it. A lot of people wanna know how much trunk space is in the back. It's definitely something you're gonna be doing when you're breaking down the entire car for the individual. Thank you, we appreciate it. Sure, sure, hey, what kind of car you just drive anyway? Uh, it's a Lexus 430 uh, LS. That's like a Toyota. It's a Lexus. Yeah, Toyota, Lexus, same thing, Japanese, right? Let's not forget Pearl Harbor. This is something when you are asking what the other person's car is, you should not do. You should not really shit on the brand that they bought previously because at one point they thought it was a good decision to go that brand. So customers can get defensive. So comparing something like a Lexus to a Toyota, same thing, really. Let's not forget Pearl Harbor. Obviously, it's a movie, it's a joke, but yeah just don't shit on their current vehicle always talk about the vehicle like you're interested in taking in their vehicle because you want it for the trade-in value anyway let's get serious you want to buy this car what yeah yeah well i know we have to think about it yeah. what's there to think about i mean you told me you liked it you asked me ten thousand questions i answered every single one of them you drove it you love it but what do you need to know uh, you know it's a lot of money and uh, we just need the time to consider it these objections are actually very real objections that i get daily when it comes to selling cars. You're not gonna be asking them right there and then when you're in front of the car, if they want the car. Typically what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit them down at your desk and follow through with the process, getting them on a yes train before giving them the numbers for the vehicle. Consider it, yeah. Well, why don't you consider this? You've been breaking my balls for about an hour asking me about every goddamn accessory in this car. What about the light? What about yes, we all get to our breaking point sometimes when people are asking question after question after question. And you always think to yourself, why walk into the dealership if you're not ready to buy the vehicle? Obviously, you don't get that defensive. You just need to guide the customer throughout the entire sale to bring them to the close. So this is why I always say, walk them back to your desk, get them on the yes train, have them saying yes to easy questions. You like me? You like the vehicle? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Perfect. Let's just like the price. And you walk them through that. And so many times you will see that people who weren't planning on buying a car that day, they were just looking buy because they like you, but they don't know that you've been trained to walk them through that entire process to get them to saying that yes. They're not customers as far as I'm concerned. You wanna buy the car or not? Not from you. I wanna see the manager. You wanna see the manager? Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you the manager. Here's the manager, right here. And then obviously he snaps the customer, which is just a funny thing for the movie. You're, you're never gonna do that because you always have to remember that you are a representation of not only yourself, but the company as well. When customers have a bad experience in that dealership, guess what? It's not screw you, Dom, your sales guy. It's screw the actual dealership name, ABC Motors, whatever it is. You're a representation, you're an employee. You need to make sure that you represent the company to the best of its ability because hey, as much as we're gonna close people on the spot, 99% of the time, 1% of the time, you still want to give them a good experience because they'll tell other people about you and they can always come back. But that's it for today, guys. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Until next time, I am out of here. Ciao.